Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install an ESXi server. ESXi is a hypervisor from VMware and it is used at data centers for managing VMs in a physical server. Though I will use a virtual machine, the installation steps are very similar when you install it in a physical machine. First, I will download VMware vSphere ESXi. So I will simply Google download VMware ESXi. And then select the link that says VMware Customer Connect. The latest version is 7.0. I can download older versions as well, for example, 6.7. I will download a free trial. It will ask you to either create an account or log in with an existing account if you have created an account before. So I log in with my existing account. and then go to the download link and save the downloaded ISO image. I have downloaded an ISO image before, so I will cancel this download. First, I'm going to create a virtual machine to install ESXi server. I will go to file and then select new virtual machine. I will keep the custom option and go next. Then I will keep the default workstation 15.x compatible and go next. I will select, I will install the operating system later and go next. Here I will select VMware ESX and then select ESX 6.x because I'm going to install ESXi 6.7. I will go next. I'll browse for the folder and then we'll create a new folder. I will name it as ESXi 6-7a. I want to create another virtual machine that's why I am naming them A and B. So I click OK. I will name this virtual machine as ESXi 6-7a and go next. I will keep the number of processor as 2 and go next. I will keep the memory as 4 GB and go next. I will keep the network card in NAT mode and go next. Here I will use para-virtualized SCSI for IO controller and go next. For disk type, I will use SCSI and go next. I will create a new virtual disk and go next. And set the disk size as 5 GB and store virtual disk as a single file. And then go next. It will create a VMDK virtual disk file. So I will keep the name and go next. This is the summary of the machine that is being created. So I will click on finish. The new virtual machine for installing ESXi has been created. Now I'm going to mount an installer ISO image. So I will go to edit virtual machine and then select CD DVD. Select ISO image file and browse to the ISO image. I will open the folder where I downloaded the ISO image. This is the one. Press open and then OK. Now if I power on this virtual machine, it's going to start installing ESXi 6.7. 
If you install ASXi server on a physical machine, then you have to connect a bootable CD or USB of ASXi software, power on the machine, and select the correct boot media to boot from. The system will detect bootable media, start booting from there, and start installing. I will power on the virtual machine. Please note the title at the top of the screen. It says Loading ESXi Installer. It's going to take some time to uncompress the files before it starts the installation wizard. So the installation has started. Now I will use keyboard to go through this wizard. As you can see, if I press escape key on the keyboard, the installation will get cancelled. If I press enter, the installation will continue. So I will use my keyboard and press enter. Next two options are do not accept and accept and continue. To accept and continue, I need to press F11 key on the keyboard. So I'm doing that. I'm installing ESXi, which doesn't take a lot of space, like an operating system. I'm going to choose the five gigabyte hard drive and to continue, I need to press enter. And I will keep the keyboard as US default and press enter to continue. I will create a new password. This root account will be used to log in to ASXi server. I type in the password and repeat the password. Then I press enter to continue. Giving the warning that the disk will be partitioned. Now I will press F11 to install. The installation is complete. Now I have to remove the installation media before rebooting. To reboot, I need to press enter. So I go to the virtual machine edit screen by right clicking and then select settings. Then go to CD DVD and change the connection to use physical drive. Then press OK. I will reboot this machine by pressing Enter.
As you can see, it is loading ESXi 6.7. The ASXi server is ready. It got an IP address from a DHCP server. This IP address came from VMware Workstation. If we use a physical machine, it might get an IP address from a DHCP server if your network has a DHCP server. Or you can set up a static IP. To see the DHCP server in VMware Workstation, I will go to edit and then virtual network editor. I see that a DHCP server is running. Next I need to go to change settings. And then if you select VMNet 8 you will see that the DHCP server is giving out IP addresses from the network 192.168.23.0 network. And that's how this ESXi got an IP 192.168.23.136. I will cancel this screen and go back to ESXi. I'm going to show you how to change the DHCP's assigned network. For example, I will change it to 192.168.101.0 network. Please note that this is an option. You don't have to change the network address. To change the DHCP network address, to change the DHCP network address, I will go to edit in the VMware workstation and then select virtual network editor. Then select change settings. Open Virtual Network VMNet 8. And I want to change the IP that will be assigned from the DHCP server in 192.168.101.0 network. And then apply. If I restart the SXA server, it will get an IP address from 192.168.101.0 network. To see the changes in the IP address assigned by DHCP server from VMware Workstation, I will need to restart the guest. As you can see after restart, the IP address has changed in 192.168.101.0 network. 
From this SXI server console, you can configure a static IP address for the network card. To make changes in the IP address or account password, I need to select Customize System. To do that, I need to press F2 key on the keyboard. So I will press F2 on the keyboard. And then I have to type the root account password. And wait a few seconds. Here I can go to configure management network and change the IP address to a static IP. I will do that so I press enter and then go to IPv4 configuration. And then select the last option which says set a static IPv4 address. By default the second option is selected which says use dynamic IPv4 address. A small circle inside the bracket on the second line indicates that this option is currently selected. If I want to set a static IP, I need to go to the last line with the arrow key and select this option. To select this option, I can press a spacebar on the keyboard. The small circle will go to the last line. After selecting this option, I can go to IPv4 settings and type in the IP address that I want. I will use 192.168.101.101. Typically, ESXi servers are configured with static IPs in this way. I will keep the default subnet mask for class C. I will press enter to go out of this screen. If I want to change IPv6 or DNS configuration, I can go to the respective line and go into that configuration by pressing enter and then make changes in there. I will keep the current settings for those. As you can see near the bottom right corner of the screen, it says ESC means exit. So I will press escape key on the keyboard. And here the configuration has not been saved yet. So to apply the changes in configuration, I have to save it by pressing Y on the keyboard. I'm pressing Y on the keyboard. Here at the bottom right corner, it says ESC for logout. So now I will press escape key to log out from ESXi server. I have logged out from the customized screen. This is the normal screen for ESXi server. The information on the screen is useful. For example, if I want to shut down this machine or restart this machine, then I can press F12 key as indicated at the bottom right corner of the screen. I will press F12 key to shut down. Here I will go to the password field and type the root password and then press enter. Here on this screen I can choose either restart or shutdown. F2 is for shutdown and F11 is for restart. I will press F2 to shut down the SXI server. And that is the end of this video. I hope you found this video was helpful. If you would like to receive notifications on future videos, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and set up notifications by tapping on the bell. Thank you for watching.